Pleading my mooncake, but like, sure. Okay. It's registering on OBS. Oh, hey. Twitch and Discord both have it. Okay. For once. So I figured it out. What'd you figure out? I just have to make sure that Twitch sees it before you're allowed. Uh huh. That's not figuring something out. That's a workaround. That's how it works for this game. Yeah, that's a workaround, though. It, this doesn't actually mean that you, like, figured out what was wrong. What's wrong is video games are the worst thing known to man. Alright, so let's go play one. Fine. So, so, where we left off, I think we were skipping the rest of it until we got to the second act. Yep. Okay. So let's continue with the skipping. Yep. Crap, we have to voice things. Mm-hmm. I forgot about that. You know, it hasn't been that long since our last stream. It's been like... Wait, when was our last stream? A week. That's a, a week's not that long. That's a long time. And I wanted to say something and I just held off. Oh? What did you want to say? I messaged it to you. Oh! Uh-huh. Now, Lottie, hold on onto my hands. Will you pick me up? Not like that. Your wrists aren't strong enough. Hold my hands like this. Like so. Now pick one foot up off the ground and stretch it behind you. I feel a little wobbly. Is she teaching the supposedly eight-year-old how to walk? No, I feel like they're doing a stretch, though. And, like, holding her hand to, like, make sure that she's balanced. Well, now that this dialogue thing has come up, yes. But before that, it sounded like, like that. It sounded like she was teaching her how to walk. That, that's why I'm holding on, on to you. Press on my hands and try not to lean forward as you stretch. Sarah came into the room to find Jesse and Lottie engaged in some manner of dance practice. Oh, Lottie, I could see your petticoats. Petticoats? Right? Mm -hmm. Okay. Sarah, Mama! She let go of Jesse and rushed over to Sarah to demand a hug. Will you play with us? Play? I thought you were dancing. We weren't exactly. I had an idea. I wanted to see if she could do it. But I'd be happy to dance with you, Sarah, if you'd like. Gay? Sure. Yes. Gay. Where is Lavinia? I would have expected her to be with you. Lavinia has not been herself lately. She sighed, twisting up her beautiful long hair and then letting it fall again. Oh, Sarah, it's been so diff 
It's been so difficult. I've always admired Lavinia so very much, but now... Admired? Quite unexpectedly, Lavinia swept into the room. Jessie's eyes went wide, her hands flying uselessly to cover her mouth. Yes, you admired me, didn't you? Only now there's a little diamond girl for you to admire, isn't there? You're nothing but a useless psych fan, Jesse Abbott. But maybe she's just worried for how you're acting. Mm hmm. Now that you aren't apparently the richest person there, and the most respected. Yeah. And the most beloved by teachers. But, like. This could actually have to do with how you're acting, not about the money and the diamonds. Uh-huh. Yes, I know what that word means. I know a lot of things. Things that nobody else does. Not even your precious princess, Sarah. With a haughty tilt of her chin, she strode away. Jessie's eyes darted frantically back and forth, her cheeks taking on a lilac cue. Then, without a word, she crumpled the fabric of her skirt in her hands and hurried after Lavinia. Emma, what's a sickle fan? <laughs> it's an elephant that holds a sickle. Grim Reaper elephant. Loudest Grim Reaper? A psychophant is uh, someone who flatters an important person that they don't really like. Why? I don't know. Boop. to see you today. Ah, uh, thank you. As you know, your birthday will be upon us in only two short weeks. <sighs> yes. I am planning a grand celebration for you. We will decorate the entire schoolroom, have a little party, with activities for all the students. Now, do you do that for all the students, or only the rich ones? Only the richest one. Then you will open your gifts with great ceremony, and after they have been seen and admired, you'll proceed to a glittering feast, where I will arrange for some unusual treats. Is there anything particular that you would like for your special day, Sarah? Uh... Will my papa be there? What was that? Oh, I, I had only hoped. He had written me that he would like to be present for my birthday, and I hoped that you might have had word. I'm sorry. If Captain Krug had made such plans, he has not informed me. I was told only to have your gifts made ready for you. Oh. Now, do not lose hope, my dear. Messages travel so slowly when the ocean is involved. It is always possible that ships are in motion even as we speak. However, even if your father is unable to attend the festivities, I hope you will have a simply marvelous time and write to him all about it. And donate some of your diamond money to the school. Yes, Miss Manchin. Thank you. Well, my dear. If you have no other special requests, then you may wish to return to your friends. There is another gentleman I need to speak with. Thank you. Good day. Upon leaving Miss Minchin's office, Sarah briefly crossed the path of a sharp-featured, dry little gentleman who wore a neatly tailored suit and eyeglasses. Good day. He nodded at her 
quite as if he already knew her name, saw no need for the two of them to be introduced once again. Good day. Something about his manner seemed mildly unsettling to Sarah, but as he soon vanished into Miss Minchin's office, never to be seen again, she quite forgot all about him. Out of sight, Miss Minchin greeted her visitor. I feel like her voice is bleeding into my narration voice now. <laughs> That's terrible. It happens. Ah, Mr. Barrow, here are the next set of bills for Miss Crew's celebrations. I have it on authority that the Parisian doll is nearly complete and will be delivered next week. I mean, my um, Jesse and Sarah voice have been mixing a little bit. Mm -hmm. But they're both little girls. Yes, but I try at least a little bit to make them sound different. I know, but like... My narration voice and mentioned voice are like more drastically different to begin with. The strange gentleman took the papers she handed him and regarded them with a sniff. Why did he sniff the bills? He's not sniffing the bills. He's kind of huffing, I think. You do not think that this is a trifle extravagant for such a young girl's birthday? Captain Crewe expected the very best for his daughter. I don't see how it is your place to judge. He ordered that your firm would pay all expenses, did he not? Yes, yes. You were very fond of the girl, then. She is my most important pupil. And the richest. Hence why she is the most important. I see. Very well. I shall take these and add them to the receipts for disbursement when the next payments arrive. Good day to you, Miss Minchin. Means keep. New week. Sarah was playing hostess to Jessie at a tea party in her rooms, but upon this occasion, Jessie's interest seemed more drawn to Sarah's French maid. Truly, the corset is no longer at the height of height of fashion. Not in Paris, Mademoiselle. It is quite good enough en Provence. In London, the curved back and large bosom still dominates, but Paris must always be at the front of things, you see. Isn't it a lovely idea, Sarah, to be free to move and breathe, to have a, a small chest and to be, still be beautiful? That sounded weird coming from me. You know? Hmm? That sounded just a little- You can totally relate, right? No! I can't relate! Um, maybe you should try it sometime. I- I think I'm good? Personally? Mm. I mean, not saying that there's anything wrong, just I'm good! <laughs> If it is beautiful in Paris, then it must be beautiful elsewhere, even if people don't see it that way. Beauty standards. Mm. The fashions of Paris are emulated all around the world, but it does take time. Marie Antoinette devised a fashion of... Shep... what? Shepherdesses? Shepherdesses. Didn't she? It was not quite so, mademoiselle. As I have heard, the queen grew quite ti grew tired of the stiff brocade and jewels of court dress, and wished something more light and simple. She designed gowns of soft, thin muslin, with much gathering and ruffle, gowns that could be both beautiful and comfortable. Joke about women's fashion here. What? Women's fashion is a joke? Correct. 
that design in its own way may have led to many of the dresses young ladies such as yourselves wear now. Perhaps before all. I thought that, that the queen wasn't very popular in France anymore. <laughs> There are many who hate the royalty of the past and all that they represent, and hope others who still hope that the Sun King will come again. Perhaps the crown will be restored one day. I do not know. It is not for my hands to decide. As for Marie Antoinette, some mock her memory, but I have always had my own sympathy. I believe I was named in her honor. Oh, how charming. Oh, I have some real questions about the people who made this game. Why? What questions? What the fuck were you thinking? Drugs? I mean, I don't know what country this game was made in. But it could be drugs. What country do you think this game was made in? Mm. A country? Has current conversation turned from Marie Antoinette to the Celtic origins of Jesse's own name, Sarah's mind wandered into recollection recollections of a book she had read recently. It was not entirely unrelated, for it had been a book about the French Revolution. Guillotine everyone? Guillotine! Guillotine! Prepare the guillotines! Specifically, the prisoners of the Bastille, men who had spent so many years in dungeons that when they were dragged out by their rescuers, their long gray hair and beards covered their faces. I wonder it's what it's like to have a beard. Huh. Don't ask me. I, I, After so many years trapped underground, they had forgotten that the outside world existed at all. And to them, walking into freedom was not so much waking from a dream as entering into one. Mm. Very humanitarian. I feel like this reminds me of um, a movie I watched recently. Oh, what one? I can't say because it'd be a spoiler. I'll message you. Okay. I'm just like... What movie? Hmm? I'm just like going in my head like trying to think of movies that came out. <laughs> to doubt the sun, to forget that there was such a thing as stars. Those poor souls. And yet, over time, they must have learned to believe in their own world. New world. England was very strange to me after living in India, but now it seems as real, or even more so, than my memories. Sarah? Hmm? Oh, please excuse me. My thoughts began to run away on their own. A pity that they, they can't carry us with them. a lot of time with Jesse recently. Mm-hmm. Well, now that she's no longer hanging out with Lavinia. The only one hanging out with Lavinia is the cat. Miss? Miss? Oh. Sarah was startled when Becky caught her arm in the hallway one day. The scullery maid was usually too timid to be so insistent. If Sarah did not call out to her, Becky would more often pass by unnoticed. What is it, Becky? Oh, miss, I heard... Is it your birthday soon, miss? Yes, it's next week. 
That's what I thought I heard, miss. But I weren't sure. When is your birthday, Becky? Don't know, miss. Never had one. But you must have a birthday. Everyone does. You were born. I don't really remember that part, miss. That would be pretty impressive. But if you don't know when you were born, how old are you? I'm not so sure of that either, miss. Workouts reckon I were past 14 and old enough for service. Past 14? Yeah. She looks like she's 10! She looks the same age as the others, yes, but she's malnourished, remember? True. True. Aww. Poor Becky. She doesn't look over 14. Mariette said she thought Becky was older than she appeared. Poor Becky. To have never had a birthday. I don't think that's the important thing right now, Sarah. I mean, I think that Sarah is dumb and privileged and has no concept of what the important thing is. As far as she's concerned, birthdays are the greatest thing ever. You'll never hear me saying that. Uh huh. Well then, if you have if you have no birthday of your own, you shall share in mine. Should we stream for your birthday? I don't know how to answer that, and I'm not making any promises on stream <laughs> where it's recorded. <laughs> Miss? Miss Minchin asked if there was anything I wanted for my birth for my party. I want my papa to be there, but she can't fix that for me. But she can let you come to my party, and I'm sure she will if I ask her to. I don't think that's what Miss Minchin expects you to ask, though. Yes, but it is a relatively easy request, so... That is true. Oh, Miss! Are, are you sure? Of course I'm sure. Every little girl deserves birthday parties. M maybe you're older, or maybe you're not, but you're still a little girl. Becky made a small noise, like a laugh, half swallowed and tucked away. Oh, I got a scarper now, miss, but I hope you're right. And I'm gonna say it. Hmm? Yep. Ka -ba -ba -ba. Save screenshot? I don't know how! Well, apparently you did it. Mademoiselle, I must hold still so that I can see the new dress on you correctly. Wow, she's so pink. She looks like, um... She looks like Long Live the like Queen! Dress. Huh? She looks like the character from Long Live the Queen. A little bit. Actually, with the wings, she reminds me of card captors. Which, after you mentioned that, I heard that, like, three... Sh about that show, like, three or four more times, like, the day after. Okay, but let me send you a picture of that, and you tell me if you agree. What? She's not Sailor Moon in pink? Was there Sailor Moon in pink? Um... Probably. Oh, uh, there's, um, Chibi Moon. I don't know. I've never seen anything Sailor Moon, re like, related. So. So that's, that's only a little bit less confusing than this card captor show. I'm sorry, Mariette. I heard... I, I heard a horse's hooves and the sound of wheels, and then they slowed, 
but I thought perhaps it was a carriage come to call a carriage with my papa. That, that, that. Mademoiselle, hanging your head will not make your papa come any faster. I feel like I'm not really giving her a French accent. I don't know what the fuck this accent is. Who cares? It's a voice. Um. Take away the bow and the neck and basically like all the white? And yeah? Kind of? Mostly the wings. Yeah. The wings are what I feel like kind of seals it. Yeah. Nor will it help me adjust your dress for the party. Party. No. <laughs> the party. Party. Is it wrong to keep hoping, Mariette? I know he never sent word that he could come, but he never sent a letter to say that he absolutely couldn't either. I... I do not think I can answer that, mademoiselle. Hope is something very personal. Then I think I will. It will be sad if my birthday comes and my papa's not here, but if I give up hope, then I would be sad now. I think it will be easier to be a little sad then, while I'm having a nice party with my friends, than to be sad now. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to make it more difficult for you to finish my dress. Mm -hmm. Just read my message. <laughs> I knew what it was before you were saying it! Sarah raised her head and spread out her arms like a little doll. If my papa is here to see this, then it must be lovely. And, and if my papa will not be there, then it should be just as nice to keep up our spirits. Isn't that right, Emily? My aunt laughed to herself, but would not say why. Skip! It was, at last, the day of Sarah's birthday party. There had been no further word from her papa, but at this moment, Sarah was too carried away with anticipation to feel disappointment. Oh, Miss Minchin, may I not go to, into the classroom yet? Everyone is already there waiting. Not until the preparations are complete, my dear. This is not an ordinary occasion. I do not desire that it should be treated as one. And so she was required to wait in the hall, breathless and fidgeting until Cook emerged from the classroom. Fuck, was this me? I think this was me. I think this was you, and it's basically just like a... Grumpy. Um, you know the, ter the, the terrible voice she used for Shady Guy? Just make a grumpier him. I'm not using his voice again, that was terrible. <laughs> So bad. <laughs> I was so glad every time I got to skip over me having to read him because <laughs> it was so bad. Only as bad as mine. Yours is better on the accent, at least. Everything's ready, Mum. Very well. Take my hand, Sarah, and let us enter. Sarah entered the Holly Hung schoolroom as the head of a sort of procession. First, there was Miss Minchin in a grand silk dress, and Sarah herself, guided by her hand. A manservant followed, carrying the box containing the last doll. Cook carried a second box, and Becky brought up the rear, carrying a third box and wearing a clean apron and a new cap.
All the students in their seats stared at this little parade, the older girls touching each other's elbows and nodding, the youngest squirming with excitement. Okay. Faced with so many eyes, Sarah felt herself unaccountably shy. Not since her first introduction at Miss Minchin's select seminary had she been quite so much the center of, atten of all attention. Uh, yeah, that feels really uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. Silence, young ladies! The room itself was not quite transformed, but certainly made far more festive. The desks had been pushed away, and long-form benches covered over with red cloth. A large table had been set in pride of place, its surface scattered with flower petals. It was here that Miss Minchin directed her entourage. James! Blech. James, place that box upon the table and remove the lid. Emma, put yours upon a chair. Becky! Becky had quite forgotten herself in her excitement and was exchanging grins with Lottie when that disapproving voice nearly startled her into dropping her box. <clears throat> yes, ma'am. She bobbed a shaky little curtsy of apology, but with the box still in her arms, the positioning was quite awkward. <laughs> Both tittered at once and then looked at each other in startlement for falling so easily into their last lost rapport. They both laughed and now they both hate each other even more. Hmm? Nothing. What's that? They laughed and then were gay? Okay. Even when they don't laugh, they're gay! Well, I'm not actually sure if the video is gay. Okay. Even if yes, Jessie doesn't laugh, she's gay. It is not your place to look at the young ladies. You forget yourself. Put the box down. Yes, ma'am. You may leave us. Ouch. I thought she was supposed to also be joining the birthday party. <sighs> she waved her hand and the servants began to walk away. If you... Please, Miss Minchin. May Becky stay? Becky! I, I wanted it because I know she would like to see the presents. She's a little girl too, you know. Miss Minchin was scandalized. She glanced from one figure to the other. My dear Sarah, Becky is the scullery maid. Scullery maids are not little girls. They are if they're a little girl. Didn't you know? As soon as you become a scullery maid, you're a little boy. I was about to say, d does she become a gender at that point? Or a non-binary person? Whatever the correct term is. Maybe she's ageless. Maybe she's an immortal. <laughs> you are now a scullery maid. What's that do to me? What does that mean? You can't. That means you're an immortal being with no age. <laughs> that is some impressive powers. Yep. But, Be but Becky is, and I know she would enjoy herself. Please let her stay, because it is my birthday. Miss Minchin took a slow breath and replied with much dignity. As you ask it as a birthday favor, she may stay. Rebecca, thank Miss Sarah for her great kindness. Coming with Rebecca now. Mm hmm. Becky had been backing into the corner, twisting the hem of her apron in delighted suspense. She came forward, bobbing curtsies, but out of Miss Minchin's sight, she passed a friendly wink to Sarah. Oh, if you please, miss. I'm that grateful, miss. I did want to see the doll, miss, that I did. Thank you, miss. And thank you, ma'am, for the liberty. Go stand. Go and stand there. Not to you near the young ladies. <sighs> Becky went to her place, grinning. She did not even mind when Miss Minchin cleared her throat ominously and spoke again. 
Now, young ladies, I have a few words to say to you. Are you ready for a few words? I have to go check on my cats first. Okay. Chasing. Uh, uh, Pink Princess Sarah, we have Lavinia the Pratt, and Teacher. Now, how is this going to work out? What's that? What? Who are you talking to? No one. You know, you really shouldn't call yourself a no one. But I'm a nobody. No, that's me. We've established I'm I am also a nobody. She's gonna make a speech. I wish it was over. You are aware, young ladies, that today is dear Sarah's birthday. Dear Sarah. Da da da. Sarah's birthdays are rather from other little girls' birthdays. Because she's richer than you. Yep. When she is older, she will be heiress to a large fortune, which it will be her duty to spend in a meritorious manner. The diamond mines. When her dear papa, Captain Crewe, brought her from India and gave her into my care, he said to me in a jesting way, I'm afraid she will be very rich, Miss Minchin. My reply was, her education at my seminary, Captain Crewe, shall be the lo such as will adorn the largest fortune. I wish you would stop. Saying these things makes me feel hot all over, and everyone is staring. Sarah has become my most accomplished pupil. Her French and her dancing are a credit to the seminary. Her manners, which have caused you all to call her Princess Sarah, are perfect. Okay, but she already knew French for, before she came here. Mm hmm. She has nothing to do with the seminary. Mm hmm. I think they're calling her Princess Sarah to mock her slightly. At least Lavinia does. Only Lavinia. I don't know. I can't really say much about her dancing skills. I think Jessie was supposed to be the number one dancer still. Her amiability that she exhibits by giving you this afternoon's party. I hope you appreciate her generosity. I wish you to express your appreciation of it by saying aloud all together. Thank you, Sarah. The entire schoolroom rose to its feet and chorused Miss Minchin's words. Lottie even jumped up and down. Thank you, Sarah. That's so awkward. Thank you, Sarah. Sarah looked rather shy for a moment, and made a very nice curtsy. Like, I'm feeling awkward for her at this moment. Mm-hmm. Thank you for coming to my party, even though you're a force to. Very pretty indeed, Sarah. That is what a real princess does when the populace blots her. Lavinia, the sound you just made was extremely like a snort. If you are jealous of your fellow, pu fellow pupil, I beg you will express your feelings in some more ladylike manner. Yeah. 
Now, I will leave you to enjoy yourselves. The instant she had swept out of the room, the web-like aura that had held the girls down dissipated, and they rushed from their seats in a babble of excitement. It was the boxes that drew the most attention. Sarah was bent over one. There, there are books I know. Does your papa send you books for a birthday present? Why? He's as bad as why he's as bad as mine. I like them. Books are an exciting. I want to see the doll. Everyone present through whispered rumors had come to know that a quite magnificent doll was due to appear. Even so, when fin Sarah finally produced the last doll from her box. Why is it called the last doll? That's what Miss Minchin called it, the last doll. Yes, is it a brand name? Did someone name their line of dolls the last dolls? That would be hilarious. That sounds so fucking like metal. <laughs> A number of the girls were struck speechless. It did not seem possible that she could be a doll. She looked only a bit smaller than the youngest students, as if a beautiful child had lain asleep in that box. I think there'd be a problem if there was a baby in that box. I think that if she was a beautiful child, she was formerly a beautiful child and now is a beautiful corpse. I don't know which one that is. I think that's you. But, like, it also could have been you. I don't know. I guess I'll take it. Well, Jesse is the one with the more, like, <gasps> face and... Well, no, because, um, Lavinia's face changed. I'll go up. It, 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 like, look at their faces. Oh, okay. Then I and then Lavinia change. goes into a smile. I guess that's me then. Sure. She's dressed for the theater. Look, her cloak. Her cloak is lined with ermine. Ermine? Hmm. Oh, she has an opera glass in her hand. A blue and gold one. Sarah drew out the doll's trunk and the little gold key which unlocked it. Inside were tray after tray of delightful things. There were lace collars and silk stockings and handkerchiefs. There was a jewel case containing a necklace and a tiara, which looked quite as if they were made of real diamonds. <coughs> <clears throat> Sarah picked up a black velvet hat to perch on the last doll's curls. Suppose she understands. Suppose she understands human talk and feels proud of being admired. You are always supposing things. Her air was very superior, and yet the words were less vicious than Lavinia's outbursts had been in the past weeks had been. Perhaps the aura of celebration had brought even Lavinia some happiness. Does Lavinia know what happiness is when it comes to Sarah? Yeah, it's being better than her. Mm. There's nothing so nice as supposing. It's almost like being a fairy. If you suppose anything hard enough, it seems as if it was re if it were real not how things work. At that moment, the door opened. Ladies. Hook drew herself up as if attempting to speak in Miss Minchin's dry tone, but the effect did not quite become her. Miss Minchin has a meeting, so she said you should all have your refreshments now. Refreshments! Becky, who had seen the preparations ahead of time, could not help blurting out. Tell me what you got. Cook shook a heavy hand in Becky's direction. The scullery girl closed her mouth and ducked away. Special treat from overseas. All the way from America. Sorry, I think it's America. America. America is what she would say if she were American. True. But she's British. Some kind of beans and spiced tomatoes. 
Unless they put it in cans. Beans and spiced tomato sauce? Sounds like chili. Mm. How quaint. In her office, Miss Minchin was meeting with a familiar visitor. Good day, Mr. Barrow. Have you come to see the goods? I can assure you the doll is just as expected. A hundred pounds. All, expen all expensive materials. Material made at, at a Parisian... Modestes? 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 No. He spent That's money really lavishly nice. enough that, that young man. Captain Crew is a man of fortune! The diamond mines alone! <laughs> diamond mines. There are no such things. Never were. Miss Minchin stood up from her chair in confusion. What? What do you mean? At any rate, it would have been much better if there never were any. Any diamond mines? I don't understand! Diamond mines spell ruin oftener than th they spell, spell wealth. When a man in, is in the hands of a very dear friend, is not a businessman himself, he had better steer clear of the dear friend's diamond mines. Or gold mines, or any other kind of mines dear friends want his money to put into. The late Captain Crew. The late Captain Crew? You don't come to tell me that Captain Crew is... Look at that face! I mean, what a way to tell her. Yeah! He's dead, man. Died of jungle fever and business troubles combined. The jungle fever might not have killed him if he had not been driven mad by the business troubles. And the troubles might not have put an end to him if the fever had not assisted. Captain Crew, he's dead. <gasps> we had no idea this was coming. Shush, sure, read your lines. Miss Minchin dropped into her chair again. What? What were his business troubles? Diamond mines and dear friends, and ruin. Ruin. That young man had too much money and spent too freely. The dear friend was mad on the subject of the diamond mine. He put all his money into it. Then the dear friend ran away. Captain Crew was already stricken with fever when the news came. Ouch! The shock was too much for him. He died delirious, raving about his little girl and left her not a penny. All right, so take all this shit that she's just received. And sell it. He left nothing! Do you mean to tell me that the child's a beggar? That she has left on my hands a little pauper instead of an heiress? She has certainly left a beggar, and she is certainly left in your ha hands, ma'am. As she hasn't a relation in the world that we know of. She is sitting in my rooms at this very moment, dressed in silk gauze and lace petticoats, giving a party at my expense! She's certainly giving it at your expense, madame, if she's giving it. I was always so sure of his payments that I went to all sorts of ridiculous expenses for the child! Her maid! Her carriage! And was she in a carriage? Yes. A couple times. Remember that was the first time Becky saw her? Was when she was coming out of a carriage. Alright. I paid the bills for that ridiculous doll and her ridiculous fantastic wardrobe! I sent you the receipts! Barrow and Skipworth are not responsible for anything. There never were a cleaner sweep made of a man's fortune. 
Captain Crew died without paying our last bill. And it was a big one. Now Miss Minchin understood, and never had she received such a blow in her life. She felt as if she had been outraged and robbed. And Captain Crew and Sarah and Mr. Barrow were equally to blame. Okay, yes, but the little girl who has no idea about any of And the guy <laughs> and the guy who was just like Don't shoot the messenger! <laughs> None of them three are to blame. Don't shoot the messenger! Technically, none of them are to blame. Well... Well, to some degree, her dad, but, I mean... But, like... Yeah, like, to some degree, but it's like he was trying to help out a friend, and also, like, it was a business opportunity. It was just a bad idea. It's... <sighs> it's complicated. I mean, I feel like my question, in part, is... He was a soldier. Yes. And then suddenly he was also a businessman. Well, no, um, they specifically they specifically said multiple times he he did not know anything about business. Yes, but he was suddenly a quote unquote businessman. Yes. With this diamond mine thing. Yes. But he was rich before the diamond mines. Apparently on soldier money. Well, so, he could have had, like, old wealth or something. Mm, he could have, but we don't the know. way they've talked about it is that he's rich because he's a soldier. Yeah. So I'm like, why does he have... Like, couldn't he have just gone back to being a soldier? If he hadn't died, of course, but you know. But, like... Fever and stress. Posed. Um, if you suppose hard enough, anything is real. I mean, that also, that fully depends on a lot of things. It kind of sounds like he still was doing stuff. He was just stationed in India. So, like, wouldn't he still have been paid? Hmm? Like, it's, I mean, to me, it sounded like he was still, like, he was still a soldier. Yeah, he's so, he was just yeah. So you didn't have to go I, back. Huh? You didn't have to go back to soldiering. He still was one. Yes, but like, was he still getting soldiers' paychecks during this time? I'm not sure about that part. Mm -hmm. Anyway. I mean, there's also like we don't really know time period and everything. But <laughs> But yeah. Anyway. Show people her prize patron, her income. All had been snatched away. Instead, she was burdened with an extravagantly brought up child, one who had cost her a great deal and might continue to cost her even more. I mean, when you're not getting paychecks for teaching her, yeah. But what am I to do? What am I to do? There isn't anything to do. Captain Crew is dead. The child is left to pauper. Nobody was responsible for her but you. I am not responsible for her, and I refuse to be made responsible! If you think she is to be foisted off on me, you are greatly mistaken. I have been robbed and cheated. I will turn her into the street! Mr. Barrow toward the door, showing no concern. I wouldn't do that, madam. It wouldn't look well. Reflects poorly on the establishment. Pupil bun bundled out penniless and without friends. Other parents might object. Other parents will see through how you've been parading this little girl around and the second she doesn't have money, you throw her out. Yep. You and I are people of business, madam. We can be sensible about these matters. You know, he's just saying madam. He's not saying madame. Sorry. Madam. This guy's not French. You know that, right? Better to keep her and make use of her. She's a clever child, I believe. You can get a good deal out of her as she grows older. I will get a good deal out of her before she grows older. I am sure you will, madame. 
I am sure you will. He gave a little sinister smile and departed. For, for moments, Maria Minchin was incapable of doing anything but standing and staring at the closed door. Is this the first time we heard her first name? I think so. During the past months, the story of the diamond mines had suggested all sorts of possibilities to her. Even proprietors of seminaries might make fortunes in stocks with the aid of owners of mines. And now, instead of looking forward to gains, she was left to look back upon losses. Such money as she herself had advanced was lost and could not be regained. Instead of a jewel of a pupil, she had only a friendless, beggared little girl. How is she friendless? I'm guessing she's assuming that all the little other little girls will stop wanting to talk to her when she does have money. <sighs> you know, like Lavinia. I think Lavinia would be more willing than Sarah at this point. Because Only to show off. Again. The Princess Sarah, indeed! The child has been pampered as if she were a queen! Okay, well, whose fault is that? Hmm. Hmm. She did not realize at first she had spoken aloud and scowled at her own loss of control. What was lost could not be recovered, but she would see to it that she lost nothing more. Oh dear. You wanted to see me, Miss Minchin? Oh no. Rip. Oh no. I don't know if I want to continue this. This is gonna but, but things are just getting interesting. I'm like, this is gonna be sad. Yes. She's gonna come in here, be pissed, and be like, your daddy died and you're worth nothing. Now work. Or something in the effect. I mean, I kind of expect Sarah to not understand initially. Well, yeah. She's a little girl. The shock alone, she's not going to be able to comprehend. This is going to be rough. Prepare yourself. I feel like I should get a drink real quick. Then get one. I'll be right back. Get an alcoholic one if you want. Sorry, we don't have any alcohol in the house right now. Again? The only time that I have had alcohol during these streams is when I personally went out to make sure I had some for these streams. I'm just saying, if you kept a bottle of liquor, not wine, but like liquor, that shit would last you way longer. Okay, but like... I should go get some wine while you get your drink. Go for it. I'll go to be I right will. back. Put up the BRB stream. I will.
This is gonna suck. For you. You wanted to see me, Miss Minchin? The older woman ignored Sarah's presence completely, turning her gaze to the young French woman who served as Sarah's maid. Mariet! Has the girl a black frock in her sumptuous wardrobe? A black frock, madame? She has frocks of every other color. Has she a black one? Mariette's face stiffened as the awful suspicion grew. You're right, Mog is howling now as soon as he walked out. <laughs> I called it! I, I mean, it was a much shorter amount of time than what I said, but... What is this? Kate Smith has quietly been sitting in exactly the same spot this entire time. What is this music? Something barely audible to me. Anyway. It was so like passion on like how is this a song that's going to be about mourning anyway oh no um i don't think it's about mourning here it's more of um delivering dramatic bad news kind of music maybe I, I yeah i guess it just i don't know it's more like tense rather than mourning yeah Remember, Sarah doesn't know yet, either. That's true. Y yes, but it is too short for her. She has only the black velvet, and she has outgrown it. Miss Minchin, what has happened? You do not speak until you are spoken to! Bring the black dress out at once, whether it is too short or not. She is done with finery! Yes, madame. Sarah did not speak. She could not. Her entire body was frozen in place. Her eyes seemed to get bigger and bigger, and she went quite pale. No, I think her eyes actually got smaller. You sure? Yeah, I'm sure. No, her eyes are the same size. Okay, her pupils. Mm -hmm. Captain Crew is dead. He has died without a penny. This spoiled, pampered, fanciful child has left a pauper on my hands. Ouch! What a thing to say right in front of her. Yeah! She really doesn't give a shit. You, Sarah! Take off that preposterous gauze, change into the black dress, and meet me in my office. And you, Mariette, you are employed on the authority of Captain Crew, and your wages were her, his responsibility, not mine. As he has left us with nothing, there's nothing left for you. Your employment is hereby terminated. Remove yourself from this establishment at once. Wow. Not only firing her, but straight up kicking her out. See, I at least thought she would, like, make her one of the other workers? But mm. I guess not. She doesn't really have a reason to, because Mariette is a personal maid. That's true. Like, there's no one else to be a maid like that, too. And... Like, presumably, she already has, a cur like, a sufficient number a staff. of maids and other staff, yeah. as is. Yeah, Mariette sure. was only here for Sarah. The bizarre thing to me is that she's yelling at Mariette to move herself at once. Like, as if Mariette has 
done something wrong or something? And it's like, well, clearly that's not her fault at all. But and also... Like, I expected her to be, you know, let go. But she's acting like she's being fired on, like, bad terms. I mean, we... It's Miss Minchin, obviously. I know, but like... It's not in I, the best state of mind. I know, but I'm kind of like... Why is she being straight up kicked out? Especially given, like, Mariette is a maid, yes, but, like, look at her. She's clean, she's refined, she's, like... Because she's not of money? Yeah, but, I mean... She lets Becky work here, right? Yes. Why would she kick out Mariette as if she's a stain? Probably because... In in this, like, get out immediate kind of way. Probably because of just the anger at the captain, and because she was here on the captain's orders and payment. Yes. It's kind of just a, like, I don't want to deal with anything related to the captain. Get out. I guess. I just... Uh, like, that's my... Why is not charging you for her presence here? Yeah, but... I don't, I don't know. I don't know. Anyway. Mariette walked heavily down the stairs. A bevy of frightened, confused faces looked up at her. The students of the party, which had been so suddenly called to a halt. Oh, Mariette, what has happened? Or the mon chemin. What? What? I, I I don't understand. Sarah's papa is dead. She has nothing. I have nothing. What? Nothing? It is all over. I am leaving. The girls who remained were too shocked to prevent Mariette's angry exit. What does this mean for her character? Wait. We will find out! Like, is her character just gone? Or, like, she must come back. We will find out! Damn, Mama! I can't believe... There must be a mistake. I will speak to Miss Minchin at once. Lavinia... Get out of my way, you clod! Why is Lavinia so suddenly nice to Sarah? She's not being nice to Sarah. She's, I think more accurately, like if Sarah doesn't have everything, Lavinia has no excuse to be such a bitch. True. It's a, it's a shock thing, I think. Like she cannot believe that this party and everything just there is on a false premise now. Lavinia shoved the other girl aside. Ermengarde could not find the will to resist her. It was all too terrible and too certainly true. Yeah, seeing somebody come to, come down and be like, her, her dad's dead, I'm out. Well, not even I'm out. I have nothing. <laughs> Neither does Sarah. Yeah, but... Maria left France for this, remember? That is true, yeah. And, like, she has no job. If she has no money, she has no returning to France. Um, and I feel like it's much harder to be this adult woman with nothing in a foreign country who never had a whole lot. Like, Sarah, technically, could sell a bunch of her belongings and pay for it. Mariette literally has nothing. Yeah. Oof. What will happen now? Will Will Miss Minchin make her leave too? Becky's legs would no longer hold. She fell into a heap on the floor, her kerchief sliding loose, and sobbed as if her heart would break. I think it's as if she's 
already broken. Mm. It's exactly like the ones in the stores. The poor princess ones that was drove into the world. <laughs> Say the laugh or what? It's a very bad fake cry. Look at those eyes. Hey, according to anime art, she's dead. At she... least on the inside. Yeah, I was gonna say, dead inside? I don't know, I mean, I've also seen this art used for basic, like that kind of eye art used for basically people who are dead. I was gonna make a... Okay. When Sarah Crew came into Miss Minchin's office an hour later, her face was white. And her eyes had dark rings around them. She did not look the, in the least like the rose-colored butterfly child flown from one treasure to another and decorated. Without Marinette's aid, she had put on the cast side vel black velvet frock. It was too short and tight, making her legs look drawn out and thin where they showed beneath the skirt. She clutched Emily tightly in an arm, the doll's face covered by a scrap of discarded black lace for a morning. Put that doll down! What do you mean by bringing it here? I mean, it's basically her, one of her last links to her father. Not to mention something comforting. Yeah. It should have been left in the room, along with... She is all I have. My papa gave her to me before I came to the school. I will not put her down. You will have no time for dolls in the future. Da, da, da. That was a surprisingly like defiant thing for her to say, honestly. Especially when she's dead inside. Everything will be different now. Do you quite understand matters? Yes, my pop is dead. He left me no money. I am quite poor. I don't think she understands what quite poor actually is. No. I'm a little surprised that she's like, sort of comprehended so quickly. I mean, but it could also be that, like, comprehending, but still processing. Like, she could recite yeah. the words, but she doesn't, like, it might not have fully hit. Yes, but I'm, well, I'm mostly just surprised how defiant she was about keeping the doll. You are a beggar! It appears that you have no relations and no hope, and no one to take care of you! Dot, dot, dot. What are you staring at? Are you so stupid that you cannot understand? Even though moments earlier I praised how smart you are. I tell you that you are quite alone in the world unless I choose to keep you here out of charity. I understand. That's ridiculous! French doll and all her nonsensical extravagant things, I actually play, paid the bill for her! Celeste doll. I was like, is this why she's named the last doll? But there's no way they would have. No, she there's. Called the last doll. Last doll indeed! She's mine, not yours! Everything you own is mine! Is that how it works? Oh, sort of. Like, technically, Miss Minchin bought all of these things and was essentially expecting a reimbursement. True. So technically, if she's never getting reimbursed, I mean, but uh, but then all count as gifts, which would technically belong to her. But even so, 
Emily would never be a part of that. Oh no, she's talking about the doll from the party. Okay. At least Emily and what most, if not like most of the Emily stuff would still be Sarah's. Yeah. But she's talking about the French doll. Sure. Emily was bought in London. Please take it away oh, from me then. Around. I do not want it. Don't put on airs with me! You are not a princess any longer! You will keep only your oldest and plainest clothes, and the rest will be sold! You are like Becky. You must work for your living! What? What can I do? You can do anything you are told! If you made yourself useful, I may let you stay here. You will run errands and help in the kitchen as well as in the schoolroom. If you don't please me, you will be sent away. Remember that! I no, won't. She still has her French skills and stuff. But what does that matter when she's penniless, apparently? What it matters is that Miss Minchin can, as she already was, use her to impress potential investors, potential parents of, like, future students, um, all of that. Yeah, but... Especially given that this is a school and she's pretending that Sarah learned that French here. Yeah, but... When, when you only want rich kids, why would you do that with a penniless child? Because the parents and investors who are visiting for the first time don't know she's penniless. They will if she's all she's wearing is that. Which is why I don't understand why. Miss Ch Minchin is approaching this in a very interesting way. She's not approaching it as a business as much as a business person. She kind of is. She runs the school herself. She owns this school. She pays the staff here. I mean, she runs the school. Le she the, these decisions I seem to be very much just more on the side of anger. At least to me. Yes, and I'm saying that that's a stupid thing. Come with me! Miss Minchin led Sarah along the hall, past her own beautiful, comfortable rooms, stopping at a narrow staircase leading upwards. Your rooms will be given to another boarder. You are to sleep in the attic next to Becky. Sarah stood still, just a moment, looking at her. Without a word, she turned to the stairs. Stop! Don't you intend to thank me? What for? The cheek on this girl. If the comment about Emily wasn't you cannot tell me that this one wasn't. Say that again? If the comment about not putting Emily down didn't come across as defiant, you cannot tell me that one just now was not. Oh, that was super defiant. It was wonderful. I smiled. I would, except her fate is in this woman's hands right now. A cheek like that will get you thrown onto the street. Yes, yes it would. I don't applaud stupidity. For my kindness to you! My kindness in giving you- Sarah made two or three steps toward her. Her thin little chest heaved up and down. Oh, oh boy. I don't know why, but I suddenly not clicked on Sarah's voice. I read that I'm like, wait, how does she sound? 
She has never been this bratty sounding. Yeah. So what's her brat voice? I, I, Go for it. I, 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 <laughs> oh my gosh. Oh, at least this has not made me cry yet. It's a rough one, though. You are not kind. You... You are not kind, and it is not a hoe. Before Miss Minchin could stop her, she turned and ran up the narrow stairs. What a way to speak to someone who could literally turn you out on the street right this second and take away the few things you still have. I mean, but also, she's a ten-year-old in grief. She's a ten-year-old who just lost everything. Correct. But... That's an incredibly risky way. But she's not going to be thinking of that right now. She should be. If you're thinking of how I have nothing, I have nothing, everything is gone. But... And the only chance you have of not even street is to play nice to this woman. She should be thinking about it. That is exactly what she should be thinking about, is not losing she's already lost. Okay, but like... She's a ten-year-old. She's not going to be thinking like that. Like, she legitimately could, like, would not be thinking like that. Even in the best of times. And especially- yes no. The only reason she would not be thinking that way is if she's never been at risk before. Which she hasn't. Which she hasn't. This does not make me like her any more than I. Like I'm not her. saying. I'm not trying I'm not to. Her stupidity. I'm not trying to make you like her. I know you're not. I'm just saying. I thought that I already couldn't stand her. I'm just but saying that. But it turns that out I was just... wrong. I could dislike her even more. I'm just saying that it does make sense why she like this right now. I don't know. Would you have given someone such cheek? I don't think it's situation? possible for me to give people cheek. You say that as if you don't give me But also, you know me, I can't be in the same situation. Anyway. I don't. I don't think I. Th there is a way for me to get into a situation that is that heartbreaking. Anyway. When she reached the attic door and opened it, her heart gave. It was another world. The room had a slanting roof. It was whitewashed, but the whitewash was dingy and had fallen off in places. There was a rusty grate, an old iron bedstead, and a hard bed covered with faded, faded coverlet. Some pieces of furniture, too worn to be used downstairs, were stored here, out of sight. Which really doesn't say that much. Actually. Under the dull illumination from the skylight in the roof, there stood an old battered red footstool. Sarah went to it and sat down. She seldom cried. She did not cry now. She laid Emily across her knees and stared at her impassive doll face. I wish she could talk. If she could speak. If she could speak. But Emily did not make a sound, and neither did Sarah. Sarah sat in silence for some time, until there came a low tap on the door. Such a low, humble one that she did not even hear it. Her attention was not roused until the door was pushed aside and a poor tear smear heaped around it. 
Oh, miss. Mara, would you allow me just to come in? Sarah lifted her head and looked at her. She tried to begin a smile, and somehow she could not. Faced with the loving mournfulness of Becky's streaming eyes, her own at last began to water. Oh, Becky. She held out her hand. Becky ran to her, clasping it tightly. I told you, didn't I, that we were just the same? Just two little curls? You see how true it is? There's no difference between us now. I'm not a princess anymore. Becky knelt beside her, holding Sarah's hand to her chest. Yes, miss, you are. Whatever happens to you, whatsoever, you'd be a princess all the same. And nothing could make you nothing different. New week! Mm-hmm. That first night she spent in her attic was a thing Sarah never forgot. During its passing, she lived through a wild, unchildlike woe of which she never spoke to anyone. There was no one who would have understood. My papa's dead. It was, perhaps, for the best that as she lay there, her mind was forcibly distracted from its anguish by the strangeness of her surroundings and the physical discomfort of the hard bed beneath her. My papa's dead. She turned over and over again in search of while all around her pressed a darkness more intense than any she had ever known, and the wind howled among the chimneys like a living thing. Some noises were worse than the wind. There were scufflings and scratchings and squeakings in the wall and behind the skirting boards. Sarah knew what they meant because Becky had described them. Rats. Oh, rats! Uh-huh. Once or twice, she even heard sharp-toed feet scurrying across the floor in her attic room and startled up from her bed. But there was nowhere for her to go, and nothing for her to do but lay her small form down again and cover her head with the bedclothes. Sleep, which she had a bit, came only in those moments where exhaustion overwhelmed confusion and despair. Sarah could sleep only a few minutes at a time before her awareness forcibly resurfaced. Papa. In the morning, her already pale face had been haggarded by the night of torment. She passed through the hallway where the student slept. The door to her room stood slightly ajar, enough for Sarah to see that everything had been. Her ornaments and luxuries had been removed and a bed had been placed in a corner to transform it into a new pupil's bedroom. Her presence had been completely wiped away. When she went down for the morning meal, she saw that her seat at Miss Minchin's side was now occupied by Lavinia, who refused to meet her eyes. You ought to have been down earlier, Sarah. Breakfast. Da, da, da. You are not a student here, but an employee. You have duties. You must begin as you are to go on. Take a seat with the younger children and see that they keep quiet and do not waste their food. Yes, Miss Minchin. I, I must wonder do. what Lavinia is going to be now. Because she's back on top, but probably with a lot of guilt about it because she didn't, like, beat her way back to the top. Nope. But I mean, she also was like, Sarah didn't really earn it. It was all because of the diamond mines. The diamond mines. I know. So, but like, I don't know. She wanted to prove that she was, in fact, still better than Sarah, regardless of any diamond stuff. She doesn't even get that chance now. No, because she's, she's back on top. Because Sarah's been knocked down. So I wonder. We'll find out eventually? We'll find out. We'll find out how all of them are now. I must do the best that I can. I must not talk back. 
This is all that I have. Now she says it. Oh, shit. Oh! Now that Sarah is no longer a student, her time is filled with chores. And the kinds of icons she can gather have changed. Into mostly bad things. Uh, how do you describe that? The these symbols, the ones on the left. Hmm. I can describe all of them. Would you like me to just go for it? The first one is a piece of bread with a like no sim like no slash across it, like the no smoking sign, but no. Which means we um, come hunger. Yes. Uh, the next symbol is a wavy black silhouette which becomes fatigue. There's a golden medal with a P on it and that becomes pride. There's a purple lightning bolt which becomes pain. There's a snowflake which becomes chill. And I think that last one is supposed to be like a dripping snowball and that becomes sorrow. As before. Or maybe it's tears. I don't know. Who knows? As before, icons are only converted at the end of the week. Until then, they can be changed or lost by other activities. Plan the order of your activities in order to get the best results for the week. Interesting. I'm gonna quick... Do I do it? No wonder do I? I mean... We can always skip from the last save, so... So no one? No, I'm saying um, we can just save over this one because we can skip back to where that one is. Okay, so kitchen duty? Man, I'm a little annoyed that we like saved up all of our icons. Oh, I'm way more than a little annoyed. I'm also a little unsure. Like, are we aiming to have the most symbols or the least? I don't know. I also, um, I was wondering about this last time, it said that she could gain or lose the symbols, but none of them had options for losing them before. Well, let's... We now have options that make our stats down. Well, let's see. Kitchen duty, gain two hunger and one fatigue, or gain one fatigue and one pain, or gain one hunger and pride one pride wash clothes gain one chill and one pain gain one fatigue and one chill or gain one sorrow and one pride dust and polish gain one fatigue and one pain gain one fatigue and one sorrow or just gain a pride Run errands, gain three chill, gain one fatigue and chill, or gain one hunger and one sorrow. Finally, ten fires, all chill. Oh, that's where it loses. All chill becomes fatigue. Gain two fatigue and two sorrow. Gain two pride and one pain. Oh, jeez, Louise. Okay. So yeah, we, we would lose all chill and it would just become all fatigue. So that's best on halfway through the week. But again, do we want fatigue? <laughs> Well, if we weren't, if it wasn't turning into fatigue, it would chill, right? Yeah. So, either way, that sounds bad. But, oh, oh. similar to how we had um, all of those stats before, and like, like, if you spend a couple of these um, or like if all of your stats are stacked into one place, 
it becomes harder to make it all go away. I'm also still really unclear if this is supposed to be a good or bad thing. Well, let's figure out this week and then we'll find out, I guess. What do you feel like doing? I mean, I'm almost tempted to just, because there's five options in five days. To one, do of one of each? Option. I think ten fires should be here or here. I said in the middle. Okay, you cut out. I said in the middle earlier, too. So... Um, whatever gains chill, we should do before then. Which run errands. Very and, strong on that. And wash clothes. Mm -hmm. Um, we should have a kitchen duty. Uh, kitchen duty and dust and polish. Yeah, what was dust and polish? Fatigue and pain, fatigue and sorrow, or pride. Swap dust and polish with wash clothes. With wash clothes? Yeah. Because wash clothes has chill. Yes, and I'm saying this way, if ten fires turns all of the chill into fatigue, mm. we can still get some chill. Mm. Does this make sense? Yeah, I get you. As if it turns all into fatigue and then we, have, then we have nothing but fatigue. Ready? This is probably the most balanced way, I think. Ready? Well, we already saved. Fatigue and chill. Pride. Okay. Now she points to them with her broom. To fatigue and to sorrow. To hunger and a fatigue. Mm -hmm. Chill and pain. Hey, look, I think we got all of the things. We got two hunger, four fatigue, a pride, a pain, two chill, and two sorrow. Here, look at you then. Fancy girl all made such a fuss over. Dot, dot, dot. Not so high and mighty now, are you? There'll be no more tea and cakes for you, Missy, and don't you forget it. I was expecting us folk to serve at the final, aren't you, lady? Never thought of how much else we get in the No, it's always you, you. Well, see how much you like it then. Nothing now, Miss. Hear me? Nothing. You know, I can only very, very, very faintly. Faintly what? Hear the music. Sadly, there's not much I can do about that. Other than I think maybe ra you raising my audio on your side would raise the music. I think I heard that. No, that requires raising my entire computer. That's true. Which will just blast back into the mic and then you'll get feedback. I don't know if you already get an echo. I have you, I have not heard too much of an echo, if any. Would if I turned it up. Yes. Da da da. Say something, why don't you? Please, ma'am. Don't you ma'am me. Ain't none of us ma'am or miss down here. That's for the upstairs folks. Please, I came to see if you had any duties for me. <laughs> Hoping I wouldn't, you could duck away and leave me to take the blame if you're caught. Look at your hands. Soft as porridge. You can crack and bleed if I gave you any room but you touch. Here, girl. Take these rags out back and wash them. If you bleed on them, wash them again. Yes, cook. I mustn't complain. I mustn't show her that I'm trying to earn my living. I must show her that I'm trying to earn my living. Somehow. 
somehow. Mariette's here. Well, she was number one on our route before. Let's go. Sarah! She thrust out a pair of fine white ladies' boots. These have been scuffed into unsightliness. Take them to the shoemakers for repairs. Make a note of the estimated cost and time required. Get back here within two hours if you wish to. Yes, Miss Minchin. The weather was fine enough, but the walk was long. And there was no time to pause and take in the sights and sounds. Hurry, hurry. Watch your step. A turned ankle would be far worse than a missed dinner. There would be no pity from Miss Minchin if I did injure myself. Not even with all the attic stairs to climb. You know, come to think of it, what a funny game to play right after. Play what? What a funny game to play after Cinder. Yeah! Yeah! Sarah I... bit her lip, chastising herself for her thoughts. There was no sense in borrowing trouble that happened. I, I didn't expect this when we started. Yeah, I think we were on the second or third stream when I saw the store description say, until she loses everything. Yeah. I can do this. I will. A soldier does not fuss and worry about the orders that might send him into danger. He does his duty as best as he can. Her mind refocused from this thought, only just in time to prevent her walking directly into the back of a man standing by a shop window. Excuse me. The quiet words were spoken out of reflex, but the man to whom they were addressed likely There was no sign that he had noticed the little girl at all. Touching the boots to her chest, Sarah hurried on her way. I must pay more attention. And then, all unexpected, it happened. Sarah saw, at a distance, a familiar face of crowds in the street. There yet? She could not be certain, for the young woman was some ways away. Still, Mariette's face and hair were not so people in London. It might be her. It seemed more than likely than not that it was. Until this moment, Sarah had been so completely swallowed up by her private grief she had not taken the time to wonder what had become of Mariette. Mariette was gone, as her rooms were gone, books and clothes and everything beautiful were gone, as her papa was gone. All was lost, the void too great to count every blackness. She might have expected, had she considered it, that Mariette would return to France and be just as permanently lost to Sarah as her papa. But there she stood on the streets of London, Mariette! She was too far away. She could not hear. Sarah would have to run to have any hope of catching her. Longing washed over her, and almost physical need to have her stroke her hair and hum French songs and tell her that everything would be all right again. That's not her job anymore, Sarah. Sarah wove between a boy with a cap and a plump woman carrying a large box, not taking to the time to apologize for her bath. Harriet! There! She turned! Her eyes met Sarah's. And then, she turned and walked away. Harriet? It seemed as if it had to be deliberate. When Harriet heard her name, sought out the person who had called it recognized her, and yet acted to prevent their meeting. She does not wish to speak to me. She doesn't even wish to see me. The chill of that thought trickled down her back like a cold rain. No, no, she just, she just doesn't understand. She has sent away so abruptly. She doesn't even know what has happened to me. She doesn't know, yeah. She must be angry at Miss Minchin for dismiss dismissing her, not at me. Maria would never be angry at me. She might be angry that she's been spending the last 
X amount of time since your last paycheck taking care of you, which is now not going to be paid. A hard nudge from a clumsy passerby brought Sarah back to the end. She had errands to run. There was no time for introspection and regret. Wow. That was a very short event. Do you make an effort, Ermengarde. The classroom is eight from the dining Manage. Oof. That's not fair. I had to go back upstairs for my book. Oh, by Lavinia's teasing. Ermengarde hurried through the and her. They're going to class. They have books. She stood there for a moment, biting her lip and staring at the wood of the door. Suddenly it opened again. Sarah! Come with me! Sarah lowered her gaze and followed Miss. Emma! The basket! Oh! Cook has an actual name! Her name is Emma Cook! But, like, she has an actual name. Yes. Here, ma'am. Very good. Sarah, here's a list of things we need for the market. Here are some coins to pay for them. When you are done, bring your purchases to Emma and any leftover coin to me. I know what such items should cost. Do not attempt to pocket any of the coins for yourself. Or you will be whipped for theft! Yes, Miss Minchin. On with you, then! Sarah kept her head down and walked out of the room without protest. At least her education is not completely wasted. That Becky can scarcely read her name! I certainly couldn't give her written instructions. No, ma'am. Well, get back to your work! Yes, ma'am. I feel like I have literally the worst characters and I'm, Mariette and Becky. I'm sorry. I say that, but actually I don't really like any of the characters, so. There we go. Um, what was, was Washcloth? No, Dust and Polish was the one that most likely I think that should be something else. I don't know what else, but something else. Maybe Painter Pride? <sighs> yeah, Kitchen Duty, why not? Okay. Any other changes? Not really. I mean, we were pretty even across the board last time, and we don't know what the next wire. Fatigue and chill. Fatigue and pain. pain. Pride and pain. pain. Fatigue and pain. Wow. Suffering or sorrow and pride. Can we redo that one? I'm kind of shocked that she got no hunger out of that. I don't know if that's a good thing! Yeah, but I don't think it's a good thing to have such high fatigue. Because we already had the highest fatigue. Oh my gosh, place. it's eight and it's almost, it's only like halfway. Yep. Uh, just that. Uh, wait, go back. Was Tent Fires the one that had two pride in the pin? Yes. Hmm. Hmm.
See, without knowing that these are good or bad makes us so hard. It seems like we might be spending them on events again, but I'm not sure. But any so in any case, I'm just trying to keep it as balanced as possible. Yeah, no, I I understand where you're coming from. Um, but the kitchen duty it was pretty unlikely for us to get the one that we got right both times. It's one out of three. Yeah, but it was pretty unlikely that we got no br uh, hunger out of that. I keep wanting to call it bread. No, no bread. <laughs> yeah, no, no bread. It's not hunger. It's no, no, no bread. No, no bread? No, no bread. Um, but like, it was, considering and, we did two kitchen duty, and that's, we should have gotten some hunger out of that. And that's really the only source of hunger. I mean, run errands, yeah. you have a chance, but it's like... Yeah. Um, okay, I guess we'll just try it again as it was. Okay. So so, a fatigue and oh, chill. The same. There's some hunger Ooh, and pride. We got pride. A pride. And hunger. Pride and Ooh, pain. Oh, we got the one I wanted again. Fatigue and pain. Wow. Sorrow and pride. So I think we're all across the board again. We are. Of all of the things, pride sounds the least terrible. It's not like an actively painful thing. How Lavi, well, you're sitting on my hair. Just as Sarah became broke, but by coincidence. How Lavi, oh, you're sitting on my hair. And perhaps we ought not to spread it everywhere then. Please, won't you move? I am reading, as you can see. Why don't you move instead? It's not like you're paying attention to your books. You never do. I don't know if that's friendship. The fact that she's calling her Lavi again. Because honestly, this is how their quote unquote friendship was in the first place. Remember? That's why I didn't like it. Mm, I have comments. As I said, I have some shit characters. I have comments that I'm not making. Sarah, dusting shelves along the wall, tried not to react in a books. It is none of my business. I must finish this task and return. I can't move because you're on top of my hair. Please, Lavi. Oh, very well. Lavinia stood and moved it over slightly before sitting again. Suddenly, her eyes gleamed. I think there are one too many shadows in this room. What? Oh no, I was wrong. It is only the scullery girl. Sarah turned her head just a bit and looked at Lavinia saying nothing. To think that she was the girl with the diamond mine. She does look an object, doesn't she? Hush. She's queerer than ever. No, that's Jessie. Who's looking at her with admiration and blood. Yeah! That's Jessie! He never likes her much, but I can't bear that way she has now of staring at her betters without speaking, as if she were supposing something nasty happening to us. Oh. You know, I was hoping for better. But anyway. I would not waste my time imagining bad things happening to other people. I watch people to find them out and to try and avoid any mischief they might make for me. If Lavinia tri tripped me or shoved me, no one would care. No one would punish her. She already did that to people. And no one punished her! Uh huh. She continued to stare at the two girls until Jesse nervously clutched her friend's hand. Okay. Come on, let's go and sit in my room instead. Okay. The atmosphere would certainly be an improvement. And Sarah said nothing. Ooh. Oh. 
All right. Um, we're at two hours. Do you want to save and stop? Yeah, I think so. I mean, it's a good place to stop, too. Yeah. I guess... We're gonna use all of our sorrow. <sighs> By the way, apparently the O stops at week 38, it looks like. That's it? Mm-hmm. We're roughly two-thirds of the way. Okay! Okay! Um, well, thank you guys for watching. I'll, I'm making sure that I saved. Okay. Yes, you did. Um, what day of the weekend? Do we know yet? Uh, Sunday? That doesn't sound very sure of yourself. Uh, let me double check. I know for sure I have something Saturday night. I okay. think my afternoon is still mostly free, but just in case I would say Sunday. Okay. Okay. Because my days. Saturday plans start early evening. And okay. Time to like get ready and stuff. That makes that makes sense. So. Thanks for watching. Bye. Bye. Sadness.